Computers used to be seen as cool or powerful because they could do math really fast. But now, if I'm in a computer lab and I restrict access to the internet, most students look at the box on the desk like it's now completely useless. The fact is, computers aren't cool or powerful because of the things that they can do by themselves. Now, we consider computers cool because of what they can do when they're connected to other machines. So what is a network? A network is a group of devices that are connected together, either physically through wires or wirelessly through electromagnetic waves, and they communicate using shared protocols. So a protocol is just a fancy word for a set of rules, and communication on a network has to conform to the protocols used on that network, otherwise your device isn't going to get listened to. Now, I'm using the word devices instead of computer, because a lot of the devices that you have connected to a network may not actually be computers. I mean, think about your home network. You probably have one or two computers, but you also have a printer, a smartphone, a tablet, a game console. Heck, even your thermostat may have to connect to the internet in order to do what it needs to do. The Chevy Volt is actually a vehicle that can connect to the internet from the garage so that you can tell it to start warming the seats from a smartphone app while you're still in bed. A lot of the devices in your life are going to include these embedded systems that actually require an internet connection in order to work properly. So in networking, we tend to call things that are connected to a network nodes. It's a generic term that just means that it's a point of connection on a network. If you were drawing a diagram, they'd be the little dots in the diagram that represent a generic device, some sort of machine that is connected to the network. Now in wired networks, the rules that govern communication are called the Ethernet protocol. And nodes are actually connected together using cables called UTP cables or unshielded twisted pair cables for the way the wires inside the cable are sort of twisted together. But they're also sometimes called CAT6 cables. And that's just defined by the standard that sort of set up how you're supposed to construct those cables. Um, but those standards change over time. Now CAT6A cables are becoming more prevalent. And eventually they'll go away and another standard will come about. And so people often use the general term Ethernet cable, referring back to that protocol to define the types of cables that we use to connect devices together in a wired network. Now nodes are connected from these wires to a box called a switch. Now a switch is just a device that has lots of ports to plug in lots of different devices. And its whole job is to remember what device is attached to what port, so that when it receives communications, it can look at the destination for that communication and send that information down the correct wire. Now, most basic switches can only communicate with devices that are directly connected to it. Now, we're going to ignore fancy layer 3 switches that are used for big corporate enterprises. Um, so if you know something about networking, just we're talking about basic switches. What this means is that if you were to take all of your devices and plug them into a switch, they'd be able to communicate with each other, but they wouldn't be able to communicate with any network outside of your own network. Now for your network to be able to communicate with other networks, you know, like the internet, you're going to need a device called a router. A router connects networks together, right? And what it does is it looks at individual packets of data for an address that conforms to the internet protocol called an IP address. And from that IP address, it can determine the next best router to send your information to. It doesn't actually know the entire path to Amazon.com or to Wikipedia.org, but it knows where it should go next. And just from that address, it can sort of say, well, I can send information from this router, this device, to the next router. And that router will know to send it to the next router. Each of these things is called a hop. And so data can travel from router to router across the internet to get to its final destination. Now, if you're setting up or using a small office or home office network, often called a Soho network, you can ignore all these other routers because you're probably only going to use one. And you can see that one router as a gateway between your network and your internet service provider's network, Comcast or AT&T's network. And that one router sort of acts as a gateway between your network and theirs. All traffic in or out of your network will travel through that one very important device. Now, wireless networks start out differently than wired networks, but they end up in the exact same place. The protocol controlling wireless networks is called Wi-Fi, short for wireless fidelity. And nodes on a wireless network 
aren't connected by wires. Instead, they're connected by broadcasting out electromagnetic waves. Now remember that word broadcast because spoilers, it's gonna have some pretty big security implications later on. So all of your wireless devices are equipped with a wireless radio that's capable of sending out waves that are picked up by a wireless access point. This wireless access point acts kind of like a switch. It keeps track of all of the different devices that are connected to it, and it can send out signals intended for those devices. Now the wireless access point itself needs to be connected to a network in order for all of those wireless devices to be able to access the internet or other nodes on the network, like a printer. So the wireless access point itself is usually wired to either a switch or in some cases directly to the router itself. This might be a really good time to mention that at home, your ISP probably just gave you a single box that acts as a router, but also has little switch ports on the back that you can use to connect things, as well as a wireless access point with little antennae so that you can connect to it wirelessly. This is because comparatively, your network is really small, and so you can have one device with little mini versions of all of this hardware. But if you were to go to work, a place that's a little bit larger, you may actually find that your network there has multiple switches with lots of different ports, that they may connect to one or more routers with different connections to the internet, and that you're gonna have lots of wireless access points, right? Because you've got a larger geographic area that you actually have to cover, and also because you've got more simultaneous connections. So you just need more hardware in order to get everything to work. Networks can actually become very expensive and complicated to keep running. And whenever something is complicated and expensive to keep running, that means jobs. So what's one of the most important things to remember when creating or using a wireless network? Remember when I talked about that spoiler and the word broadcast? That's because for information to get to or leave your laptop, it has to be broadcast out into the air. Wireless networks are by their very nature less secure than wired networks. And that's because in a wired network, communication travels down a specific wire. It's called discrete communication. It goes from one point to another. But in wireless networks, because there is no discrete connection, you can't actually do it that way. You have to broadcast everything. Now for the most part, this works because your laptop is programmed to only respond to packets that are floating through the air that are actually addressed to it. But there are free and readily available products on the internet that can allow you to turn that feature off and make your computer listen to all the packets that are floating in the air, regardless of whether or not they're addressed to you or the person in the cafe next to you. Now I know that can sound scary, but there are ways of preventing people from being able to see your private information when you're using a wireless network, right? What you need to do is encrypt your network so that all information sent either from your laptop or from the wireless access point gets scrambled using some fancy math and something called a key. Now this isn't a physical key. It's a key that you create using a string of various characters, letters, numbers, capitals, lower cases, exclamation points. And that key is used as a secret decoder ring to encrypt messages into code and to de-encrypt those messages back into their original form. If you don't have the key, you can pull all the packets you want out of the air. They're just gonna look like gibberish. Most people tend to think of this key as a password, something you have to enter to get onto a wireless network. But that's not actually the way it works. That key is actually being used constantly in this encryption and decryption process. And it's constantly working to protect not only your network at home or at work, but also the people that are attached to that network. Students every once in a while will ask me about using uh, an open Wi-Fi network in the neighborhood, right? Some, somebody who doesn't have a password on their internet so that they can access the internet for free. Is this okay? Are they doing something wrong? Are they stealing? The implication is always that they're sort of putting one over on the person who actually owns the network, that they're using their internet you know, for free without their knowledge. But in reality, you don't know that. You don't know what that person is doing with the information that's now traveling through their devices in order to get to the internet. It could be that somebody is actually trying to collect your information. Remember, you're now sending personal and potentially private information across an unencrypted network through somebody else's machines to get to the internet, right? They could totally see what you're doing, gather information, um, and in fact, because it's unencrypted, somebody who knows how to use these tools that just happens to be attached to the same network as you could also be grabbing that information. The fact is, when you use an open network, 
you're just as vulnerable as the person whose network you're using. Now, in general, and maybe I'm a little bit of a worry wart here, but whenever I'm on an unencrypted network, right, one that doesn't have that password on it, I'm always a little bit apprehensive about doing anything sensitive, right? Making an online purchase, for instance. True that the website I'm using probably has some encryption built into the website itself so that my, you know, credit card information doesn't get sent uh, in plain text over the air. But I can't guarantee that. I really don't know what sort of programming went into that particular website and if it's potentially open to some vulnerability that they're not aware of and I'm not aware of. Whenever I'm on an unencrypted network, I just sort of see it as I have one less level of protection. And so if I can, instead of making an online purchase on an unencrypted network, I'll just wait till I get home where I know my network is safe and encrypted. And of course, your network at home is encrypted, right? It's estimated that 28% of all Wi-Fi networks out in the wild are completely unencrypted. Now that's better than it has been in the past, but it still means that a malicious computer user can drive around and find lots of you know, potential locations to do something illegal without having it traced back to them. And if the network they choose happens to be yours, well, I'm sure eventually you can convince the police that you weren't the one who downloaded those illegal images or that you weren't the one who made those transactions with illegally stolen credit card numbers that were then delivered to a vacant house down the street. But the fact is, that process is ugly and it's gonna take a lot of time. And it's not a great feeling to have all your neighbors see the police remove all of your computers and technical you know, devices from your home. It is a far easier process to simply open up your router's manual and figure out how to encrypt your network, right? put a password on it. It'll protect you as well as those who use your network. And if you still choose to call it a password, well, I won't fault you for it, so long as you're actually using it.